Hello there and welcome to Upper Six Further Maths. Here we're looking at De Moivre's Theorem. So what is De Moivre's Theorem? So De Moivre's Theorem uh, is linked to complex numbers. If we have z equals r e to the theta i, then if we just apply some rules of indices and raise this to the power n on both sides, we have z to the n equals r e to the theta i to the power of n. Now what do we do with these rules of indices? Well, r will be to the power of n, so that will be as normal. But then when you've got an indice of an indice or a power of a power, you multiply the powers together, so it's e n uh, theta i. So what's happened here? We have raised the modulus to the power of n, and we've multiplied the angle by that power as well. We can also see this in modulus argument form. If we have r cos theta plus i sine theta, and we raise both sides to the power of n, then it's going to be r to the power of n, but the angle, the argument, is multiplied by that value of n. So two different things going on here. We have one power of n and one multiplied by n. So it's just a simple application of indices, really. Let's have a look at how we might use this in a question. Uh, for example, to simplify this tricky question here, well, the first thing we'll need to do is apply De Moivre's theorem. And De Moivre's theorem tells us to do the modulus to the power of 5, but there's a, there's no modulus here, it's just modulus of 1, so we don't really need to do that bit. But we'll multiply the angle by 5, and we'll do that on the top and on the bottom. But notice here how we've also got a sneaky negative between the cos and the i sine. Now, when that's the case, the, the negative has to move into the angle like it has here, and we can then put a plus in the middle. And now both of these numbers are in modulus argument form. We can now use the rule of uh, complex numbers. When you divide complex numbers, you subtract the um, arguments one from the other. But in this case, we're going to be subtracting a negative. So when we subtract the negatives of these um, arguments, we're going to get 51 pi over 17. And that's on both of them. Now, 51 pi over 17 doesn't feel like it's in between minus pi to pi. So then we'll have to subtract 2 pi because it doesn't really matter if you're adding or subtracting 2 pi from either a cos function or a sine function. We just want to do it to make sure it's in between pi to minus pi. And if we do that, it actually simplifies down to something quite nice. It simplifies down to cos pi plus i sine pi. And we could actually work this out. We could work out cos of pi is um, minus 1 and sine of pi is 0. So that's going to give us a final answer here of minus 1. So we use De Moivre's theorem to multiply the angle by the power on the outside of the brackets. Let's have a go at another question then. So here we're expressing 1 plus root 3i to the power of 7 in the form x plus yi. Well, the easiest way to do this would be to work out the modulus of this complex number and the argument of this complex number so that we can write this complex number in modulus argument form. Then apply De Moivre's theorem. So that's going to be 128, that's 2 to the power of 7, and then cos 7 pi by 3 and sine 7 pi by 3. This 7 pi by 3 angle is definitely outside the range from pi to minus pi. So in this case, we'll have to subtract 2 pi from the angle. And now it's inside the correct range from, zero, from minus pi to pi. And now we can evaluate this. Uh, if we now just simply expand the brackets, we're going to get 64 plus 64 root 3i. Okay, so that's De Moivre's theorem then. Let's uh, have a go at a couple of questions here, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so question 1f then. Now the first thing I'd want to do is sort out this negative in the middle of the uh, cos and sine function here. So I'll need to incorporate the um, angle, so the negative symbol into the angle. So it's going to look a little bit like this. And then all of this would be to the power of 15. And when it's to the power of 15, we're going to multiply 15 into the angle. And when we've got a 15 and a divide by 15, that's going to simplify really nice and quickly to cos minus pi plus i sine minus pi. 
And then we can evaluate both of these, and that's going to give us minus 1. And then moving on to this one here, I think the first thing I'll do is work out the modulus and the argument. So the modulus of this is going to be 3 times, so 3 squared plus root 3 all squared. And let's just do that on the calculator just to make double sure we're getting this right. 3 squared plus 3, that's going to be 2 root 3. And the argument is going to be a tan inverse, and it's going to be opposite. Let's just draw it out on the argan diagram. Root th so 3 across, root 3 up. So it's going to be root 3 on the opposite side, uh, 3 on the adjacent side. So it's going to be root 3 over 3. And that's going to give us pi by 6. So we can change this question into 2 root 3 bracket cos pi by 6 plus i sine pi by 6 uh, to the power of 5. So let's now do 2 root 3 to the power of 5. So um, answer button to the power of 5. And that will give us... Okay, let's not do that. Let's do 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. And times that by root 3 to the power of 5, that's going to be 9 root 3. I'll simplify that in a second. And then we multiply the power into the argument. So it's going to be cos 5 pi by 6 plus i sine 5 pi by 6. And now let's simplify these two numbers at the front. 32 times 9, that's 288 root 3, multiplied by cos 5 pi by 6, plus i sine 5 pi by 6. And now let's expand the bracket. So it'll be 288 root 3, multiplied by minus root 3 over 2, and then the sine 1 is going to be a half, so that would be plus one half. So let's now expand the brackets on this. It's going to be 144 times 3. 144 times 3 gives us 432. That would be minus 432 uh, plus uh, 144 root 3i. Wow, there we are. That's quite a big number, but we're expecting it to be a big number because it was 3 plus root 3i to the power of 5. And there we are. That's the answers to these two questions then. So have a go at the uh, other questions from exercise 1c on page 10. Make sure you get really good at this stuff because later in the chapter we're going to be using De Moivre's theorem quite a lot to solve multiple different problems, and it's good if you can just be... Uh, um, fluent on the basics of De Moivre's theorem. So thanks very much for watching.